Alright, well, let me take you upstairs again. And here, they are now rebuilt. All done. <laughs> All done. I've actually hit a bit of a mental block on how to make these bits that I've got work on as near to the design as I've come up with with the chuck plan. So I've employed the services of an expert. When I say employed, he's being paid in cups of tea. Hello everyone and welcome to Michael's layout. Yeah. This is not trains on Tuesday. No. But this is David Atkins, the expert, <laughs> and he's going to work out a conundrum for me. How to make all the bits that I've got work more or less on the plan without buying anything new. <laughs> I like a challenge. <laughs> Actually on the advice of my knowledgeable advisor, David, uh, I'm going to start, even before laying any tracks, to attempt to do the waterfall there because of getting at it later on. So we'll have to give that a try now. And I've got this uh, tube of clear silicon, but the trouble is it's very old and it may have gone off, but I'm going to give it a try. And I've got this grease proof paper on which to uh, squirt it. Uh, here's the moment of truth. <laughs> Let's see if anything comes out. I've got a horrible feeling it won't, but now it's gone off. Armed with a fresh tube of silicon, we're going to have another go. I've done this on greaseproof paper so you can peel it off afterwards. And at the bottom, of course, it will start to spread out. Right, okay, that, when that's dry, tomorrow that should be okay, I hope. be the waterfall. Spring. Right. The last time I was here there was a full layout, operating layout, but it is under reconstruction. So we'll take a little look at uh, what Michael is doing here. Well at the moment I'm making the beds for the two bridges that will go in front of the waterfall. Now the, uh, the tabs that will uh, support those platforms. Right, that'll do when it's dried off. There's the base of the first front bridge carrying two tracks across it. And there's going to be another one at the back there carrying a single track. And one of other David's ideas was to alter this corner completely, which I've done, and that's that sticking down. And apart from being a good consultant, he's also quite useful at cleaning tracks. <laughs> Thank you, David. <laughs> yes, got to keep my hand in. <laughs> yeah, during the course of cleaning the rails, the tracks, David's come across uh, my secret ingredient, which is 
bent nails for going around curves, you see. Works well, that. <laughs> he doesn't believe me. No. <laughs> no. And when you take up your flexi track and it's not straight, this is how you, well, this is what you do. Look at that, straight. No problem at all. Well, David Atkins is probably well on his way to Canada by now on the aeroplane and he's left me with uh, some really good ideas. Now uh, it might sound a little bit crazy uh, but I'm actually starting one part of the scenery <laughs> before I've even laid any track and I'll show you what I'm doing. A long long time ago Mandy found this uh, piece of wood, it was just a sort of line and somebody had obviously cut it off a tree but I'm going to use it as a waterfall as I've mentioned before over in that corner there and there's the base for the two tracks of the line going down but I've got here uh, another piece to go behind that to take the third track and this uh, is, I'm going to make into a waterfall is going up in the corner there so in order to get it there um, I'm going to have to make up the scenery part of it before I start laying the tracks otherwise I'll never be able to get it there so you saw me making a little bit of waterfall out of uh, silicon and now I'm just with this little bit of slightly off white just painting it on there almost dry brushing not quite it's not quite dry brushing but I can get the, the feel for the waterfall And that's uh, more or less how it's going to look. If you've watched any of my previous videos, you know that I saved a lot of what looked like rubbish um, bits of scenery and stuff, which I thought might get used again. And some of it is now. I'm mixing a little bit of PVA glue with uh, water uh, to make a fairly thin mix here and then I'm going to paint it onto here in various places and now I'm going to take a little bit of that rubbish stuff that came out of the box I showed you in the box and just Put it back on there to add a bit of green to it, uh, sort of stuff that would be going where it might. And just secure it down with a few dabs of. PVO and water. Now I should point out that this is not a, a how-to video, this is how I do. Um, let's try a little bit of this. We get a little bit of forest in there as well and then I get that fixed down and uh, yeah that's the beginning of it and it's coming on all right and I'll put a bit more vegetation around here as well that'd be good 
So it's the next step on the waterfall. I've uh, mounted it on the blocks that I've glued together and I've put some stones down here and I've glued, glued this in position and I've brought this large piece of paper here uh, to make uh, the backdrop for it. So um, when I've got that in place I'll uh, see if I can do a bit of painting on it and, uh, and get the, the backdrop looking good. In the meantime I've also put this little bit of cardboard here or paper and card and I'll get the more of silicon and get it flowing over so that um, that looks like water as well. So that's, that's as far as I've got with that at the moment. Now I've got to just let, wet the, uh, let the glue dry down there and then the next stage. And the first thing to do is to paint it the sky uh, with the blue. So here we go with that. We now have the uh, sky blue and never mind the brush strokes in it because that will all take part or play part in the clouds uh, and I think I might need to drop the sky down a little bit more here I don't know we'll see so that's it now we have to wait for that to dry and then put some clouds on it and then of course clouds are not the same colour all the way through uh, they tend to be a bit darker in places so I'm going to use uh, this one which is a uh, a, a, so a jet, jetty blue it's called jetty blue and um, we'll just get the top off that and with a smaller brush this one we'll just give it a little bit of touching up the, on the bottoms of these some of these clouds That's beginning to look reasonable, I think. Looks a bit like rain, doesn't it? <laughs> rain on the way. Now, I'm just going to offer that up behind there to see how it's coming on. Now for the backdrop I bought paper instead of card and it's a bit floppy. I've never tried this before but I'm reinforcing the back of it with these strips of old uh, plywood and at the end I've overlapped it so that the next piece can join against it and that should make it stand up at the back there. At least I'm hoping it will. Well whilst that's uh, drying I'll get on with the waterfall a bit. Uh, it's beginning to come together and here I shall make um, some scenery and banking down here and the same across here and then the tracks will run round here and that will there will be uh, bridges 
over the uh, over the river which will run down here yeah so it's coming on and uh, that scenery I've got that cut about about right there now, I must admit that I uh, everything that you see me doing uh, I've copied or learnt from watching YouTube videos and I'm going to try something down here now which I saw um, Marklin of Sweden doing uh, with would you believe toilet paper and the first part of the operation is to make a, a weak, weak mix of PVA and water and paint it on where you want the river to be and then take the toilet paper and place it onto the mix where you've painted Now see if I can do the same as he did with a paint over the top of that again. If this doesn't work I'll just have to start again but anyway I'll give it a try. Now he used a, uh, a square end stippling brush and just dabbed it in. I'd like to have put the banks up here as well but unfortunately the plaster of Paris bandage that I've ordered won't be here for a few days. So I'm having to do it backwards. We just make the texture of the water for the moment. And then it's going to take a bit of time for this to dry before we get the coat of paint on it. But basically just, there's a pattern in this uh, toilet paper and you've really got to get rid of the pattern because <laughs> I don't think the water would have the same pattern in it. Now whilst that is still wet I'm going to paint it uh, some blue over it. I searched around in my old stock and I've got this green one here and I've got a brown so I'm going to do a bit of mixing there and see if we can't come up with a, a good solution for that and I just pour a little bit of green and there a little bit of brown we'll mix that up and a little bit more green I think these little pots are all 
tester pots that I got from uh, Wilkinson's or Wilco's. Now let's see what happens when we put that on. Too bad. Now we need a little bit of random splashing around here, so that be white where the water is coming down and splashing. I think that'd be as good as I can get. A little bit up here. Well, that's back. Uh, pushed it back to where it will be. And um, now I've got to paint some trees at the back there. Um, as if this is going into a woodland. That would kind of be. Can be a bit of fun, isn't it? Well, that's all for this time, folks. Uh, please come back and see how I get on. And thanks for watching this time. Bye bye for now.